And we'll kick off development by pulling the graphics assets out of the original Dangerous Dave binary. Now the usual first step is to pull out a disassembler like Ida Pro and open up the executable. Keep the default settings. Uh oh. Now this pop-up is telling us that there's an unexpected translation layer within the executable. Probably compression or worse, encryption. Let's try anyway and see what happens. Alright, so we can see in the map at the top that no instruction areas were found, except for the entry point here that's this block of code, which is most likely a bootstrap routine so that when the OS loads the binary pages into memory, it can execute this block which decodes the remainder of the file. Now I don't really want to deal with this to start off, but fortunately the solution is just one Google search away. Search for Dangerous Dave EXE file. Now on the first page is a modder's website which tells us that LZ compression is applied to the EXE file. If we decompress the EXE with the utility, we can then access all the resources at these various addresses. Now since we're interested in the graphics, I'll follow the link to the tile set format, and here we find a byte level description of the resources. Now thanks to all the work put in by Level Lass and Malvinius, we can start working on this right away. Let's get our project environment set up starting with the make file. I'll use the GNU C compiler, link against SDL2. Now I'll keep our work in the era of Dangerous Dave by using C89. Keep all warnings, I don't think I'll be pedantic this time around. Now since I'm on Windows, I'm using MinGW. Now right now we're just going to make the tile extraction utility. Put all this together, and we should be ready to go. We'll be extracting the VGA tile set. Now this game actually supports three popular graphics formats of the era, but I always played with VGA, so we'll use that now. We'll need standard I.O. for file support, string for manipulating names, now I always use fixed width data types even though they're not original to the 1980s C, standard library, just in case, and SDL. Now our entry point. We'll definitely need these addresses, so I'll throw them in as constants right away. Oh, I forgot to uncompress that exe file. I've already downloaded the LZ utility, and I'll run it on the binary. Now this utility needs an MS-DOS program, so we'll need to run it through DOSBox. The file starts at roughly 76 kilobytes, and after running the utility, we more than double the size. Now at this point, we could reopen the binary in IDA and take a look behind the curtain, but we don't have to do that thanks to the modding community. Now back in our utility, we'll open the executable as a read-only binary and seek to the address of the VGA tile data. Now according to this, the tile data is run length encoded using a custom algorithm that's already worked out for us. We just have to undo it. Malvinius even provided this pseudocode for us to follow. So we'll grab the first four bytes and store them in as our final length. Note that we're reading bytes in as little endian, so I'll shift the reads into their proper place for the unsigned 32-bit variable. Now we'll read each byte while keeping track of our position. We'll need a large data buffer to store everything, and a single byte buffer for each read. Let's initialize all that. Now time for the big loop. Actually, let me make sure that we're ready to go with a test build. Nope, looks like I probably screwed something up in the make file. Let's see. Alright, I put a space after the switch. 
Well, there's another problem. Okay, I forgot the switch down here. Okay, looks like it built with the expected warnings about unused variables. We should be ready to move on. We'll start by getting a byte from the file. Now if the highest order bit in the byte is set, then we'll mask the lower bits and use that as a counter to read that many bytes in place. However, if the highest order bit isn't set, then we read and repeat the next byte that many times, plus 3. Now our large data buffer should now contain all of the tile data uncompressed. But our data is only indexed VGA. We'll need the palette before we can produce any actual colors. So we'll seek to the palette that we already have the address for. Now VGA palettes are typically 3 byte RGB values with 256 possible colors, so we'll need 768 bytes to hold it. So for each of the 256 colors, we'll pull out 3 bytes and stash them in our palette. Now the modders noted that this palette is actually 6-bit color, so we'll need to left shift the data by 2 in order, our, in order normalized 8 bits. Now since all the data in the palette is in memory, we're done with the file. Let's take a look at how the data is actually stored and set up the variables. We have a 32-bit count of the number of tiles that we'll note. And never mind the order I use here, it's effectively the same thing as we did above. Now we'll set up an index and read in the file position of each tile. We need to do that in, so that we know when we're done with each individual tile because many of them are arbitrary sizes. Since we use the address of the next tile to know when the next current tile ends, we'll need to set an extra index to mark the end of file. Now, I've decided to save each tile as its own file rather than create a sprite sheet. It makes our workspace messy, but it's easier to get started without managing sprite sheets. So for each tile, we'll start with the first byte that we've indexed. We'll initially assume that each tile is 16 by 16 since most of them are, but if they're not, then the file tells us the correct dimensions. We'll need to check the first four bytes prior to processing. Now another point is that there's some kind of boundary that results in byte stuffing. We'll need to skip that byte. Now all the tiles are small, so one way to check to see if the data specifies a dimension is to see if the odd offsets are zero. Now no tile is larger than 256, so if these are dimensional information, then these bytes should be zero. Now if that's true, the other bytes should have non-zero data, and I'm going to limit the size to what I already know is the largest tile in the file, which means hex BF and hex 64. Now if all of these conditionals are true, then the first and third bytes of the first word are width and height of the tile. Now to help with organizing the output tile, we'll use an SDL surface and do a low level overwrite of the pixels with the palette indices. Now for our workhorse loop, we've already set the initial condition, so we just need to set the invariant and the iterator. Read a byte and look up the corresponding RGB values in the palette. Write those bytes to the surface at full alpha. 
move on to the next bite. Now I want to create a new file for each tile based on the number. Now I'll manipulate the name with the usual set of unsafe C functions that no one should ever use in production code. Print myself a little hint to make sure things are working. Save everything and hopefully we'll get many files. Uh oh, looks like we seg fault on file 53. Now that's the first tile that's not 16 by 16 so I probably mishandled the counter in some way. All right, right here. I read the dimensions in, but I forgot to push us forward in the file. Uh, let's rebuild. It looks like we pulled out 157 tiles. And they look good. Now we're ready to move on with the level data. Thanks again for the assist, guys.